I'm Sarah Hume. I'm the curator here at the Kent State University Museum, and I'd like to welcome you to a virtual tour of our exhibition, Fashion Timeline. This is a permanent feature here at the museum, but the pieces that are on view rotate regularly because the textiles that make up these garments are delicate and are sensitive to being exposed to light for long periods of time. This exhibition showcases the aesthetic changes that occurred in fashion from the 18th to the 21st century. But more importantly, it contextualizes these aesthetic changes with what was going on technologically, politically, socially, and economically at the time. We begin our tour in the 18th century, which was a period of sharp divisions between rich and poor. These divisions led to differences in the access to materials. The wealthy had clothing that really showcased their wealth. The materials were incredibly valuable, made of heavy silks and brocaded with gold and silver and then heavily embroidered. In order to showcase how much wealth they had, women in particular had styles of dress that showcased these expensive materials. The robe à la française in particular was one style that really showcased this material. The back of the dress went from one pleat from the shoulders all the way to the hem and was just a cascade of luxurious material. Because these materials were so valuable, dresses were reworked over the years. As styles changed, the dresses would get taken apart and put back together in order to continue to use these incredibly valuable materials. Men also participated in this display of finery. Their clothing also incorporated brocades, silks, rich embroidery done in golds and silvers. They also wore wigs and jewelry and perfume. They were just as decorative as the women at this time. The value of materials at this time was due to the labor that was involved in making them. Everything was done entirely by hand. This was gradually changing in the course of the century, though, as there were numerous technological improvements. So many of them were, in fact, directed at the production of textiles. This period of rapid technological change is known now as the Industrial Revolution. Just as the Industrial Revolution allowed greater access to goods because they were more affordable and more readily produced, the political landscape also changed dramatically in the end of the 18th century. With the French Revolution and the American Revolution, monarchies were overthrown and more democratic systems of governance were established. This break with the aristocracy and nobility was reflected in the fashions. The styles that had been associated with the court gave way to styles that were now inspired by ancient Greece and Rome. The styles were a radical break with the past the heavy, ornate silks and brocades that had dominated the early 18th century styles gave way to cottons and light, airy fabrics with much lighter silhouettes. A broader swath of the population had access to participate in this new fashion system, and they needed instruction in how to dress. They looked to fashion magazines, which were growing in this period, for instructions. The fashion plate showed them how they should look, but the instructions in the text also provided information on how to dress and how to behave. A permanent feature of the fashion timeline is a display of examples of Ackerman's repository. This was an early 19th century periodical which beautifully displayed these new fashions that were available to this society. These magazines really gave way later on in the 19th century to the mail order catalogs, which we'll see in the next gallery. The developments in fashion magazines represented printing on paper, but at the same time, the early 19th century saw innovations in printing on textiles. The prints that were developed were innovative, imaginative, richly detailed, and very colorful. They were very popular, printed on cottons. Cotton originally came to Europe from India, where technology had developed wonderfully fine fabrics. The weavers and spinners knew how to create incredibly sheer, lightweight, delicate textiles. Europeans found these incredibly desirable and developed extensive trade with India. 
Ultimately, through the 19th century, the trade became increasingly exploitative, where Britain ultimately established a colonial power over India. Textiles were at the heart of a great deal of exploitation through the 19th century. The need for cotton to supply the growing demand for this material in fashion led to the growth of this raw material in the United States by unpaid labor. The cheap, affordable fashions, which became extremely widespread and affordable, were done at, on the backs of people who did not receive compensation for their work. Exploitation was really at the heart of much of fashion in the 19th century. Gradually, the progress of the silhouette during this period went from the very liberated silhouette that you see in the turn of the century with the high waist, the loose fit, the sheer fabrics, and gradually it became increasingly constraining. The corsetry became heavier and longer, the bodices became tighter, the waists dropped, and the skirts became fuller. These full skirts were created through layers and layers of petticoats as you get into the 1840s. Through the 1830s and 40s, there were two technological innovations which really revolutionized fashion. The first was the development of photography. For the first time, people could really record and see exactly what fashion looked like. Ultimately, obviously, fashion and photography would continue to develop hand in hand for the next centuries. But at this initial time, it was really a miraculous innovation. The second technological innovation was the development of the sewing machine. While they were early prototypes in the 1830s, it was in the mid 1840s that you really see a successful version that ultimately caught on and became a commercial success. Because it didn't come in until the 1840s, we realized that all of the pieces in this first gallery would have been sewn entirely by hand. 